Hey everybody, this is Frozen Devotion. It's a podcast dedicated to all things hosier. And with me is Carol Jean. How's it going, Carol? Great. Good. Okay? Good. Um, she is uh, in the Hosier 24-7 Facebook group. Um, that's how her and I met through the Facebook group. Um, but we've also been to a bunch of concerts together. She's kind of my partner in crime with going to concerts. And we've had lots of fun together. Um, we have been to 13 concerts together. And um, number 13 was at the cemetery. <laughs> Lucky number 13. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Minneapolis was right before that. Yep. Yep. That was the that was the last one we were at. So um, so basically doing this podcast, what we're going to do is every month we're going to have a different topic to talk about that's Hosea related. So this month I decided since Carol's on and she's kind of my concert buddy that we would talk about concerts. So Carol, what is your favorite concert and why? And no, you can't say all of them. <laughs> I'd say Austin uh -huh. was one of my favorites um, because of our positioning and it was a smaller theater. He was, he was so on fire, but he's been on fire in every single one. But like I said before, um, New Orleans was special and you have your story there. And Susan was with us. And then Memphis mm -hmm. and Nashville also, because we had Pat and Susan both with us. That was and cool. When all we the had concerts both. have been great. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Austin was fun and it was small. Wasn't that like a, 2000 capacity or something like that. Yeah. I, I um, vaguely remember. Yeah. That's where they film Austin city limits, I believe. And, uh, I can't remember the name of the theater now, but it's a fantastic moody video. theater. I think it was moody, moody theater. theater. Yeah, yeah. That was awesome. That was very cool. Yeah. That yeah. Was great. Awesome. And so we gave him, we remember when we gave him chocolate in Houston and then and you asked for your toothbrush back in Austin. <laughs> you got to tell that story so people know what what we're oh, talking about with the toothbrush. I thought that I had dropped my toothbrush in the chocolate bag because my toothbrush came up <laughs> missing. And so that was and in my defense, I went around the corner to the W Hotel as you waited in line uh, for Hosier and the security guard told me or the person there said you know, he told me to go around the corner and have a drink since it was, since it was cold. And he said, um, Andrew's going to come out at 1230. So I went around the corner and drank and the bartender hooked me up and it was great. Uh, he <laughs> got me a, a triple gin and tonic. And uh, so I was pretty hammered by the time I left. <laughs> <laughs> Emily was threatening to come and get me because uh, she knows how I am with navigation. And uh, so basically. I was Carol worried <laughs> because you were gone a long time. <laughs> and yeah, I thought maybe you had gotten funny. lost or something. No, no, I was just right around the corner. But um, <laughs> But I asked Caroline Henry, she said, oh, I just wanted to tell you that the chocolates were so appreciated that you gave them last night, or I guess it was the night before. And I said, oh, I was just looking for my toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So she looks at me like I have three heads. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then that, was, that was special, though, because he signed the set list for the group. Right. Was that... Austin? That was Austin. Oh yeah, I that believe. was Austin, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And he talked to us for a long time. He was he was really sweet. He did talk to us for a long time. That he was did. that was on that leg of the tour, that was the longest we got that to was talk the to him. Cuz yeah, there had been it, so many people waiting mm -hmm. through through that whole trip. We did we did a road trip from um Atlanta to Austin, seven shows in 9 days. And it was great. It was trip of a lifetime. And yep. I would say Austin, he was able to spend the most time. I think it was probably the least amount of people. It was. Yeah. And we didn't get to meet him at all, at all the shows. Now I, I counted, I don't know how many times you've met him apart from 
us being at concerts together, but I've I've counted six. That sounds about right. So, um, but you didn't meet, did you meet him in San Francisco at the Bread and Roses? Yes, I did. You did? Okay, cool. I met him before the show. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. And then um, the best was San Diego. Because yeah, that was great. Oh, my god. We, we went to the San Diego show before the album dropped. It was after the EP came out, but it was before the album dropped. And um, after the show, there was maybe, what, 15, 20 people maybe. waiting? Yeah. Yeah, it was great. And he, st he was out there for a while. And um, we were all just kind of, like, hanging around, like, just talking and you know we, try, we were trying to be respectful of other people talking to him too but yeah. we were just kind of hanging out and all kind of sharing the same space and it was it was a lot of it fun yeah that was great i don't know if we'll have an opportunity like that again because no, i really doubt it it's just so packed with, with people wanting to meet him afterwards now that it's well it's because he's known as, mm -hmm. as an artist that will come out and meet everyone and sign anything yeah. um and talk to them so words got yeah. out so uh, yeah we were lucky in san diego we were lucky and i i appreciate that he does that i don't i don't know if i would be able to do it like the way he does it because he's pretty much doing almost a show every night yeah and then after that going out and meeting hundreds of fans i mean i i don't know very many people that would do that but i appreciate yeah, that he does her. that because he does he yeah, certainly doesn't have to and it's it's really nice that he does so um you know i was i was thinking if you um, remember in austin i was just gonna say in austin mm -hmm. we talked to him so long and then as we were leaving he was still talking to us after really? he hugged us goodbye he said something else to us <laughs> and, and we turned around and waved again, but he told us again, I think as we were walking off, how much he appreciated us and the support through 24-7. Oh, yeah. I, I think I remember that now. I was I was about to feel really embarrassed that I just walked away from him talking, but yeah, I he, he was just kind of finishing up and saying, he was, you know, I appreciate you and stuff like that. Well, he, he, he knew us by the end of the road trip because, you know, we tried as much as we could to come out and meet him after every right. show, but. He didn't come out every time, and I think New Orleans he did come out, but we didn't wait. Um, no, it was like two thirty a.m. I think. Or yeah, two. it was pretty late, and we were pretty tired. I mean, that was. Yeah. It's not an easy thing. I don't know how he does it with the this being on the road for a year or two years at a time. He's twenty nine years old. That's, how <laughs> That's he does probably it. <laughs> we're we're no spring chickens, <laughs> especially me. <laughs> So that's probably youth has something to do with it, I guess. But it does. It yeah, does. but you know, by the end there, we were like, oh, you know, it's hard. I had to buy yeah. a pair of tennis shoes because <laughs> my boots were just not working. I needed some comfort. So, you know, that's that worked out well. It did. It did. I needed some comfortable shoes. Have comfortable shoes for sure. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't matter how cute they are. You yeah, have <laughs> I was griping because the ones I the ones I bought had sparkles, and uh, I am not a sparkle person. I don't I don't do sparkles. <laughs> the sparkles would be more like me. Not yeah. You. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't do sparkles, but apparently at concerts I do sparkles. So yeah, I guess it's okay so. as long as you're comfortable. So. So, yep. um, so I assume that your favorite moment in meeting him, would that have been Austin as well? Because we got a lot of time with him, although we got a lot of time with him in San Diego too. Yeah. San Diego was really special. I got a great picture with him mm -hmm. and, you know, by the time he started the tour, when we went to Atlanta, he was not doing selfies with other people. Mm -hmm. So basically that was the only time I've gotten to have a real good selfie, you know, with him. Yeah. Like a legitimate picture. Yeah. A legit, legitimate picture with him. Yeah. So that yep. was, you know, that was pretty special. Yeah. 
Yeah. But I did like it when he signed the set list for 24 seven. That was really great. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was cool. I, I would have to say that Austin would be my favorite, you know, meeting him. And right. he's, he's so sweet. He's just really easy to talk to and just really always very sweet to everybody. So really, really awesome. Cool. Okay. So, um, let me look through my notes here. So, um, I also forgot to mention, um, Susan Smith was supposed to be on the podcast today, but she was not able to, uh, poor connection. We got a good connection, Carol. Yeah. Okay. I can um, hear you now. Okay, cool. Um, Susan Smith was supposed to be on, but she doesn't have time for us. So um, I'm telling everybody to send your hate mail to Susan Smith at gmail.com because um, she should get all the hate for this not coming on stuff. No, I'm just kidding. Don't. And also her email address is not Susan Smith at gmail.com. So don't send hate mail there. But I'm hoping in the future she can come on. So she just uh, I hope so too. wasn't able to do it this time. So. Chip manicure. <laughs> a mani petty. <laughs> no. She's such a girl. <laughs> she had to wash her hair and get a mani petty yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So <laughs> uh, you know, if she doesn't want to get ripped on, she'll have to come on the show. Otherwise, it's open season. If you're not That's here to right. defend yourself, it's your own fault. As far as I'm concerned. That's right. So uh, me too. anyway, so hopefully she'll be here sometime in the future, but not this time. Um, and then um, we are giving away, speaking of concerts, two concert tickets for Chicago on November 3rd. So if you want to go to the Chicago concert on November 3rd, we're giving away two tickets for that show. And I think they're pretty good tickets. They're on the main floor. They're row A, though I got to work out that venue because I've heard from people that the double A's are the front and the regular A's are like 27 rows back. I'm not sure how true that is, though. I looked on the, the venue map and it says that A is the front, but... You might want to look into that. But anyway, free tickets, right? So yeah. um, it could be could be front row, but I don't want to make any guarantees just because I've heard that that might not be the case. Um, but yeah, main floor, row A, free tickets. If you want the tickets, go to hosier247.blog. And if you click on the Frozen Devotion uh, menu button, that'll take you to the Frozen Devotion site. Uh on that website and you can enter to win the tickets. We are, are those for November 3rd, November 3rd. Did I say November 3rd? Show. There's November yes. 4th too. Yes. This is for the November 3rd show. Okay. Um, so basically if you go on the, on the website, hosier 247blog um, go into frozen devotion and enter to win those tickets. And the way we're going to determine who the, who the winner is, is there'll be a little area when you enter to win the tickets explaining why you think you deserve the tickets. And the reason we did it that way is because everybody is so stinking mad at Ticketmaster for snatching up all these tickets that uh, we thought it should go to the most de de deserving person. So write on there why you think you deserve the tickets, and we will... Um, pick a winner based on that. So you will have until the end of July to submit uh, for the tickets. We're going to announce the winner on the next podcast, which will be in August. Don't know the date yet, but it will be in August. Hey, Emily. Yeah. I just, I just looked up the theater and yeah. row A is about 14 or 15 rows back. 14 or 15. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but it's good still, thing I didn't make tickets, guarantee. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. I mean, pretty good tickets still. Right. Main floor and what the heck, they're free, right? Yeah. So, exactly. Yeah. Cool. 
All right. So, um, that being said, um, you have you have until, uh, like I said, the end of the month to enter to win, and then we'll make the announcement on the next podcast in August. So we're going to be doing these uh, podcasts on a monthly basis, and I'll go into a little bit more about all that later on. So, but for right now, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Hosier News. Um, and with that, I wanted to talk about Glastonbury because he just did Glastonbury. What was it, day before yesterday, Carol? Was it day before I think yesterday? So. Mm -hmm. um, and I watched it and it was really great. I, I thought it was fantastic. So um, he, I put together a little uh, clip of uh, kind of showing a, a little, what do I want to say, Carol? It's a little, a little highlight, short. highlight it's a clip. Short video. A short a highlight clip. Yes. Compilation of yeah. Glastonbury. So here's that. itself made the staples. song about songs. It's kind of lyrics are constructed of all the oldies. Yeah. And it's appropriately named almost sweet music. I hope you, hope you appreciate it. <laughs>
Sincerely, you have the best weekend and look after each other. Okay, so um, Carol, what'd you think about Glastonbury? Now you weren't able to see the whole thing, right? No, but I saw your compilation. Okay. And uh, I saw like the first three songs, I think, mm -hmm. and I had to stop watching. Um, but I will go back and finish it. But as usual, you know, he really brings it. Yeah. I love the fire behind them when they're doing dinner and diatribes. Yes, yes. Well, speaking of fire, you know, he, he said, you know, to for people to look after each other and to stay hydrated. Because yes. I guess um, I looked at uh, some Glastonbury news and stuff like that. They had like record heat. Yeah, um, they've been having record heat in the in the Europe right now. Yeah, and apparently during that time of the day was like the hottest part of the day too. During his set, it yeah. was like I don't know, like ninety degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know what that would be Celsius. I don't I, yeah, it was, it was very I don't know hot what it would be, but and... yeah, but I, I appreciated that he was being mindful of that and, you know, he's telling people to hydrate. And so he's, he's so sweet. He's a he good really, lad. He's a good lad. <laughs> <laughs> Someday you're going to tell him that. Oh, I've told him from a distance. I'm gonna, yeah, but no, to you're face. a good lad. So <laughs> it just probably shakes his head at half the crap I do, but oh, there's Emily again, yeah. Um... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I thought that was that was kind of kind of nice that he did that, and then um, also during Nina cried power, Stormzy cried power. Stormzy. Mm -hmm. That yeah. so I looked into that a little bit too because I didn't know. Uh, what I mm -hmm. I don't know storms yet. You know I'm not <laughs> very into modern music, or I don't listen to the radio or anything. So I had to kind of look at what's going on, and then um. But I found this article from CNN. It says uh, grime superstar Stormzy has won uh plaudits for an electrifying and historic or history making headline set at Glastonbury on Friday night which saw him highlight Britain's knife crime crisis and racial inequality in its criminal justice system. Stormzy became the first black British solo artist to headline the festival in its 49-year history, delivering a high-charged political and at times emotional performance on the venue's legendary pyramid stage. He started his set with a stab-proof vest bearing a Union Jack flag, which street artist uh, Banksy... I don't know Banksy. who that is. Banksy? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Banksy later said he had designed. Famous. Yeah, Banksy he's a. He's a famous street artist. Oh, okay. Yeah, I had. I don't know anything. Yeah, I, I got to look. I think he's stuff. from New Zealand. I think he's actually okay. from New Zealand and he's fantastic. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah, so I guess he designed this vest and I guess it was a nod to the knife crime epidemic 
that's going on over there. And so um, I thought that was really cool that, you know, yeah, Andrew mentioned, you know, that and gave a nod to Stormzy Cried Power um, in his set. So he's changed. I don't know if, I don't know if he's going to do Stormzy Cried Power in the song from now on, but I have noticed that he switches names in there from time to time. I think Marley is in there, Bob Marley, but I don't think he was originally. And he added Springsteen. Springsteen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like what he does with Marley with his, he puts that Marley twist on, right on it when he's singing it, which is really cool. Yeah. So he, he kind of adds and takes away, which is, uh, Pretty cool. So, and did you notice in, in from Eden at Glastonbury, he actually said for an, your other man to hang from a tree again? Is that what he said to hang from a tree? Yes, yes. He yeah. keeps instead I, of tied to a tree. Yeah, and I think that was intentional because I know he's oh, yeah. he's unintentionally said hang, and he kind of midway through the word sw switches mm -hmm. it back to tied. But for those of you who don't know, so the. The original from Eden says hang from a tree, but he's been gigging with tied to a tree, your other man tied to a tree. Um, but he's recently changed it back to hang from a tree. So uh, what do you think about that? So tell me about your thoughts on why you think he changed it to begin with. Um, what's going on with him changing it back? What do you think about I that? I really don't know, because I do think that um, the song is about the devil, mm -hmm. and it's um, he, he's wanting this guy's woman. That's, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure why he changed it, though, from hang from a tree, which is more violent than tied to a tree. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, maybe he wanted it to be less violent when he started the North American tour. And then now mm -hmm. he's gone back to it. I don't know. Mm. What do you think? Well, less violent. I don't know. He he's a pretty passive person, but I don't I don't know that he would shy away from violence in the lyrics. I just don't. I mean, he might, but he seems to try to just be very honest about everything. And mm -hmm. so I don't know if he would change something because it's too extreme. Maybe, but I I was thinking like hanging somebody from a tree is very different than tying somebody to a tree. So hanging somebody from a tree, you're trying to kill them. Um, right. Tying somebody to a tree is you're trying to keep them there. You're, you're, you're restraining keeping, them. You're keeping them there. You're restraining them. You're not letting them go. So it seems like a different meeting, meaning there. Um, almost, and, you know, part of my theory was that, you know, maybe with, with him having to leave for tour, um, and I don't know how this, I haven't thought it all through, but like maybe this, this woman's other man stays, you know, while he leaves. And I, I don't know. I'm not maybe. really sure. Um, but I, th I think it's interesting that he goes back and forth and, yeah, me too. you know, switches it up. I think the, the slower version is gorgeous. I, it is. it's amazing. I, I think I like it better than the original, you know, it's pretty it's, great. It is. It, and Susan Santos' violin just adds mm -hmm. so much to it as well. Um, just kind of like a, I don't know, it adds another layer of emotion, I think, or something like that. So, yeah, very good. So, so speaking of Suzanne Santo in the news, so Glastonbury was her last time, well, that we know of for now her last time with the band, which makes me very sad. <laughs> it does me too. I'm very sad because I think she is fabulous and she's very talented and I love the the violin. I think I the violins know. got this really nice eerie sound to it, you know, and it, it works really great with his music. So I I don't know what, nobody knows what's, gonna happen either they haven't said a word about anything like 
if they're I assume they have to replace her with somebody. Um, but I don't know if they're going back to cello, like the way it was before, or if they're gonna find somebody who can play the violin. Nobody knows. It's all up for speculation. So I'll be really interested to see what goes on there. But um she she released her dates, so it looks like she's on the solo headline tour in Europe. So she'll be in the UK, Germany, Netherlands, Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. And that's for September. So my hope is, is that she'll just be gone for September and come back. That's what I'm hoping too. I don't know if that's wishful thinking, but I really hope so because I think she's fabulous. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So, okay. uh, um, You know, she's a pretty special person. And I don't think a lot of people realize, you know, how talented she is. And, you know, she's an actress. She she's a a singer, a songwriter. Um, The girl can do anything, Mm -hmm. really. I mean, she's really talented. Yeah. And she's got a lot. I mean, he's been lucky to have her, but she's been lucky to have him. And I don't see where she's got another album coming out, does she? Have you heard anything as a follow up to Ruby Red? So I heard... Uh, I don't remember where, so I can't tell you my source on this, but I heard that her intention with this leaving is to tour, but also try to write. Okay. And so I think she she's wanting to get another album out there. Yeah. So, and yeah. for for those of you who haven't heard her solo album, Ruby Red, it's phenomenal. It's amazing. Really, I can't. I can't say enough about it. It's it's really great. So check that out. Okay, so we're going to take a really quick break, and we will be back soon. Okay, so we're back. So basically, I wanted to talk about what we're doing as a podcast, why we're doing it, what to expect from it. So um, we're going to be doing a monthly podcast. We're going to be putting out the audio version every month that's available to everyone all the time. So you could go to Apple Podcasts for that or a Spotify podcast for that. We're also going to be offering extras to people who want to get more content. Um, the, so we, the way we have it structured out is we have, uh, two different membership tiers or groups. Um, we have the groupie tier, um, and we have the fanatic. Um, so groupie is basically you get access to the video version of the podcast. So if you like watching podcasts, um, you might want to upgrade to the groupies. Um, so basically you have to pay to see this. <laughs> uh, so I don't know if that's going to hinder you <laughs> or it'll actually encourage you. Yeah, um, sure. <laughs> it could go either way. I don't know. Um, but basically, um, so for three, yeah, it could go either way. Um, so, the, so to get in the groupie, uh, groupie group the groupie tier is three dollars a month which is pretty cheap you get access to the video podcast as well as um you have access to feedback so anytime we read feedback on the show um we will be getting that uh primarily from people um who are in the groupie or the fanatic tiers so um the the fanatic tier has everything that the groupies have, um, but extra, you get a uh, quarterly bonus content. So every every quarter, we're gonna put something extra out for you. Don't know what it is ahead of time. It's just gonna be something extra to get um, to get out of it. And also, every month we're gonna do a call in show. I, now I'm part of a of a group that does a call-in show. It's, it's not a video call-in, it's all audio. Um, but basically everybody who's in the group 
can join this call. And it's really fun for building community because you actually get to talk to people that you haven't actually gotten to talk to before. And it really kind of makes everybody closer together. And it's, it's, it's a lot of fun to do. So that's for the fanatic, uh, tier, which is $6 a month. So we got the $3 and we got the $6. And so that'll just kind of help support us in, in the cost of, uh, doing this stuff to do that. What you're going to want to do is go to hosier247.blog slash join. Um, or you could go to hosier247.blog and click on frozen devotion. You'll be able to figure out how to join from there. But, uh, yeah, it should be pretty easy to sign up for that. And you'll have special access to different parts of the website that other people would not have access to. So it kind of unlocks that part of the website. What we're going to do is we have another giveaway. So basically anybody who joins for the groupie or fanatic uh, community that we have, anybody who joins before next month will uh, be eligible to win this really nice uh, drawstring bag. It's got, uh, I'll put it up on the screen there. It's got a frozen devotion on it and it's made from a hundred percent polyester woven fabric. It's a wide, soft drawstring. That's easy on your shoulders, durable quality, metal grommets, long lasting printed design on both front and back. The reason I went with the drawstring bag is because if you've ever been to a festival or a lot of concerts, is they don't allow bags with more than one pocket. You can only have like a one pocket bag. And so this bag will be really nice to bring to concerts with you so that um, you can keep all your stuff in there and you don't have to worry about buying a different bag or not having a bag or something like that when you when you go to a concert or a festival. So it's a it's super high quality, super nice bag. So I think you're going to like it. So Head over to hosier247.blog slash join and you'll be eligible for the bag. So, all right. And then we have some feedback um, from some people in the Hosier247 Facebook group. Let's see. Uh, Jessica B. Johnson said, I'd love to hear you guys discuss his musical influences and influences in general, authors, poets, visual artists, etc." And I think that's a fantastic idea. I think we're going to actually do that for one of our Hosier, um, uh, Hosier topics for the month. Um, we'll probably talk about all of the above, like his author, you know, Yeats and, um, you know, like Robert Johnson and, you know, all those great artists that has, have influenced him. Um, Isabel Lloyd said, it'd be awesome if you guys did a little weekly dissect of one of his songs, whether you choose which song or do a poll or something, and just analyze the lyrics from that particular song and what you listeners, people on the internet and host your say the song is about. Um, I had thought about that too, about like doing like lyrical analysis. And... I like the idea as a community talking about our thoughts about a song lyric or something like that. Honestly, I'm kind of hesitant and here's why. Um, I'm hesitant because, because Andrew is hesitant to talk about that. So like he wants, you know, he wants people to come to their own conclusions and to interpret it their own way. And so, uh, maybe on a small scale, it'd be cool, but I'm, I'm actually kind of hesitant to do it like on a show like this because I wouldn't want to, you know, go against something that Andrew might not want us to do. What do you think about that, Carol? Am I being paranoid or do you think it's good that we don't analyze lyrics or what do you think? Well, I think, he, and I agree, he does want, us as the public, the listener, to de to determine what the song's about, mm -hmm. because everybody has different experiences, and as mm -hmm. as we all know, with lyrics, they can mean one thing or another. Mm -hmm. um, I I think 
I don't know. Um, I think it might be controversial because mm -hmm. things mean so much. I mean, what one one person may think means this, another pe person is that, mm -hmm. and to Hosier, it might ne mean neither. Mm -hmm. And so, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess we need to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe I'll put up a poll or something. Yeah, hey, to, that's a good idea. To, to figure out what people want to do. I mean, I, I'm not worried about controversy. I'm okay with us getting in a fight on the podcast. I'm not scared. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, what I really don't want to do is I don't want to do something that Andrew wouldn't want us to do. Right. So, right. Well, uh, he likes us to talk about his lyrics, I'm sure. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. So, as long as we do it nicely, I guess. Nicely. He would want us to do it nicely, right? Well, I would what think would so, do? but. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay. So let's see. Um, Kristen Michelle says, totally looking forward to it. In context, she was meaning the podcast. Um, already hit subscribe like a week ago. So oh. that's pretty cool. Um, so apparently she's on board. Awesome. Um, okay. So. Uh, Susan Unwin, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Looking forward to this and love your picture gallery behind you. It looks amazing. So let me show you something. With my hand disappearing. I don't know, Carol, if you can see that or not, but it's it's magic. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it's computer magic because uh I I don't hang, and Carol knows this, I don't hang, like, hosier stuff up in my house because that would make my husband feel really jealous. So I can do it virtually, though. <laughs> so that's the best I could do. Oh, um, well, that's what you did. I was wondering. I was going to ask you that. Yeah. But... See, all Carol can see is, like, a green screen, right? You're only seeing mm -hmm. the green. Yeah. But yeah, there's, there's like, album, album art behind me. Yeah, it, it looks really good. So your computerized <laughs> background is great. So. Right. <laughs> uh, let's see. Mary Beth Canty says, I would love to hear an in-depth description of an album. Oh, speaking of album cover art. Uh, of his album cover art. What landmarks are depicted where his face is obscured on his eponymous uh, freshman album effort? Uh, what is the significance of the time on the wall? An offset timepiece where 12 o'clock is not at Midha Midhaven? Midhaven? Am I saying that right? I've never heard of that term. What is the event taking place in landscape depicted on the trunk of his body in the art on his sophomore album cover? What is the details? I'm, sh I'm sure, I think that's the refugees, right? Coming on land yes. um, on a raft. Um, I think she's she's talking about like a whole... A whole podcast dedicated to talking about these things, which would be really cool. That would be interesting. Um, because he's got some really great art. Rain has done sure does. an amazing job. And the concepts are, it's not just the art alone, which is really good, but the concepts behind the art is really great. So that would be a great idea. Let's keep that, that in mind. Great yeah. Um, Susan Unwin again says, uh, please, could we have an interview with the wonderful Susan Smith? as she is the backbone, heart, and soul of the group, and without her, there perhaps would be no 24-7. Yes, I 100% agree. Um, Susan Smith, you have no choice. You have to come on the podcast. So Yeah, no more manicures, pedicures. <laughs> no more of that junk. <laughs> Unless you don't mind being on video while you're doing it. That We can make that happen. <laughs> We're flexible. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I think of our road trip, I always think of Susan's walk by. Susan's walk by her walk by hosier when he's trying to <gasps> grow <laughs> Yeah, so we were giving her a rough time so because uh when when she was talking to Hosier, um she she that was the fastest meet and greet ever. She literally didn't even stop. She just kept walking. Just nice nice to see you. And we we're we were joking that she has to at least last eight seconds next time. And I think she did. She actually stopped and gave did. him a hug and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. she did much yeah, better the next did. time. So that was um, so I think it's pronounced Valentine. 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 Sorry, I'm not sure 
how to pronounce that. Testolin says, oh, you are Emma Byrne. Oh my God, I've been watching a lot of your videos and it was you. Well, can't wait for the podcast. Yes, I am Emma Byrne. Um, I don't like my real identity out there, which this is going to kind of ruin anyway. So I might as well just give it up. But it's too late. I'm already Emma Byrne. But yes, Emma Emma Byrne is just an alias. So yeah, that's not real. Um, Carla Ledsham Robinson july 1st is my birthday so happy, happy birthday Thanks. carla i hope you have a great wonderful birthday so all right well that's that's it for the premiere podcast we are we are a wrap so i hope you guys enjoyed it um thank you for c coming carol on the podcast i was a little worried that um it was just going to be me and nobody wants to just watch like 45 minutes of just me. So I'm glad you came on. That was good. Oh, um, you're Thank you. <laughs> uh, thanks everybody for listening. Um, be sure to visit the hosier247.blog um, where you can enter to win those concert tickets. Uh, you can join the Frozen Devotion community and um, get exclusive Hosey related content as well as a chance to win that drawstring bag. So there's lots of goodies there. So head over to the hosier247.blog website. So, uh, so that does it. So thanks, everybody. And as Andrew would say, uh, look after each other. And we'll see you in August. Bye. Bye. <laughs>